Hello everyone. Jesus had 12 apostles that we know by name. They are Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John, Matthew, Bartholomew, Philip, James the lesser or younger, Jude or Thaddeus, Judas Iscariot, Simon the Zealot, and Thomas. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 1, we read, Jesus called his twelve disciples and gave them power and authority to drive out all evil spirits and to heal diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Today, from the tenth chapter, we read that Jesus sent out seventy-two others on a similar mission. But we do not know the names of those people. Friends, you may remember last week we read that while Jesus was making his way from Galilee to Jerusalem, he sent his disciples to a Samaritan village to make arrangements for his stay there. But he was not granted permission. Angry and upset at their rejection, the disciples asked Jesus to call down fire from heaven to destroy them. But Jesus reprimanded the disciples for thinking of retaliation. Jesus never forced anyone to accept his teachings. For sure Jesus knew that the Samaritans would shun him, and yet he wanted to give them the opportunity to receive him. When they rejected him, he left quietly and moved on. There were still many villages that had not yet heard his message. So he went on to another village, and from there he chose seventy-two disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the villages he planned to visit. They were sent as messengers to prepare for his arrival. Before they went, Jesus gave them very clear and specific instructions. He said, 1. The harvest is abandoned, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Friends, Jesus used the analogy of a large field of grain being ready for the harvest but lacking laborers. The fields refer to the vast humanity waiting to be gathered as God's people, but the workers are few. So Jesus first instructed the disciples to pray to the master of the harvest to send out more workers. Who is the master of the harvest? God is the master, for he is the only one who can actually send people to call his people back to himself. In other words, Jesus reminded his disciples that they must continually rely upon God's strength rather than their own. 2. He said, Courage! I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Friends, Jesus warned his disciples that they were being sent out like lambs among wolves. The words lamb and sheep are used throughout the Bible to symbolically refer to God's people who put their trust in God's word and follow him faithfully and courageously speak the truth and of his love. On the other hand, in the Bible, wolf is symbolic of a vicious person or spiritual enemy. It symbolizes a person who is a threat to God's people. It was a stark reminder that the world, then as now, was purposefully hostile to Jesus' followers. Therefore, they were to be courageous despite constant danger and risks to their lives. 3. He said, Carry no money back no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Friends, at first glance, Jesus' instructions appear to be unreasonable. Can you imagine a journey without money or a bag or sandals, and greeting no one along the way? The point of this instruction was to encourage the disciples to stay focused on their mission and not be distracted by material concerns and trivial matters or worthless things because the job they had to do was urgent and the time was short. 4. He said, Into whatever house you enter, 
first say peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Friends, Jesus instructed his disciples to bring the blessing of peace to each household. Peace or shalom was an ancient method of salutation among the Jews by which they prayed for restfulness or freedom from stress and pressure, protection, healing and financial security. But the peace that Jesus wanted his disciples to offer to people was more than these. Jesus' peace is an effective word which refers to the reconciliation or peace between God and man. What does it mean to let your peace rest on him? And even more, how would one let his peace return to him? Friends, Jesus was simply saying that the peace would indeed go to that person or household if the person and others in the house deserve it as a result of the treatment of the apostles, or it would return to the apostles who imparted the greeting. 5. He said, Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Friends, Jesus told his disciples to thankfully receive what was being offered to them and stay there and continue their work without begging from house to house for better food and lodging. And at the same time, he told them to regard the support given to them not as charity, but a kind of payment for their work on behalf of God's kingdom. 6. He said, Heal the sick and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Friends, the disciples were instructed to administer healing as part of their ministry. Healing was important because the kingdom of God, which had come with power, must be manifested in acts of mercy and kindness. Friends, the instructions given over 2000 years ago to the disciples apply to us even today. Because Christ's great commission has been renewed in each one of us at baptism. Through baptism, we have all been commissioned to go out to live and proclaim the good news of Christ and heal people in the name of Jesus. We are already part of the group of harvesters in the field. However, I believe that in today's world, it is more about talking to and encouraging those who have been already baptized to truly believe in Jesus and in his gospel than going afar to preach about Jesus. Even in our own homes and in our families, the joy of harvest is noted there. Because 1. We all depend on our own understanding and strength, efforts and plans. We fail to acknowledge the immensity of God's power. We do not trust in the Lord. We trust only in ourselves. 2. We are afraid of wolves. We are afraid of the world. We are afraid of rejection and ridicule. We are afraid of those who will cause us trouble, criticism and persecution. 3. We are often distracted by passing concerns and things of this world. 4. We fail to give our full attention to the proclamation of God's word, healing, reconciliation and peace. We fail to bring comfort and hope to others with the words of Jesus. The kingdom of God is near at hand. Friends, before talking about Jesus to others, let's, let us first pray to God our Father. Let us lift God up and trust in the Lord with all our heart. Like the disciples, we need to pray with others for courage. Let us pray that we may courageously and generously respond to Jesus' call to speak in his name and to act with his power. Let sharing of our faith with others be accompanied by the offering of forgiveness, reconciliation and peace. Let us tell everyone that God is very near to them and that if and when they seek Him, He will bless them with peace and salvation. Amen. 
God bless you.